Imagine this, full frame under f1.0, summer, island of rub, and an impersonation of myself with hair and unimaginable joy at 2 years and 3 months without sleeping, steaming full on all day. What a joy! <laughs> We are here for the in-depth review of the Lava Argus Full Frame version 2 35mm f0.95 and I feel like Kubrick shooting that candlelight scene, lighting up the scene only just with candles. Disclaimer, I have been sent this lens for a review and I will be sharing my experience while using it. Let's get to an unboxing and specs and understand more on what type of photography or videography is this lens designed for. Just like the other Lava lenses, the package is really well designed and presented with a colorful package. Inside the Lava full frame Argos 35mm lens with the lens cap and lens hood, instruction manual and warranty card. This is an ultra-wide f0.95 full-frame 35mm lens with internal focusing design. The structure is completely made out of metal. The front filter thread is 72mm and yes, oh boy, most of the times during the daylight you will want to put an ND filter when shooting at the widest aperture. The angle of view is 63.4 degrees, mounted on full-frame cameras just like I used my Sony a7S III and A3 to shoot with it. The weight is a substantial 755 grams and yes, you have to understand there is a lot of glass inside it and the actual size isn't that big. So basically a good amount of weight ratio that can match up your basically standard mirrorless camera. Being such a wide aperture lens, this is kind of understandable. The focusing is completely manual with clicked or declicked aperture, so you can select your favorite by clicking or declicking with a knob. And f-stops go from 0.95 all the way up to f16, with a minimum focusing distance of 50 cm. The minimum focusing distance of just 50 cm will give you the opportunity to really blow out the background like nothing in the market right now in this category. We'll be leaving basically no trace of what is behind the focusing subject. The focus knob is smooth with a really long throw, making it almost all the circle around the lens body. For this, I would also recommend an incomplete circular focus ring when used for video. Having a big throw like that is a must, and when dealing with such a wide aperture lens, minor small adjustments are made easier. Remember, when being closer to an object or person, even at small moments, it can make your complete subject out of focus in a fraction of a second. And when shooting such a wide aperture f f0.95, means that if you have the eyes in focus, probably the nose and ears will be out of focus. I went on a weekend trip and my main actor was my two-year-old boy that really likes to get photographed. So let's dive in in a complete photo shoot and an actual bit yes, so you can understand how hard it is to shoot a two-year-old boy. Having experience shooting with manual lenses and fast-moving objects in the past, one of the best companions is high shutter speed enabled. So in the various even small movements, you can be actually sure to get at least some of the pictures on the desirable focus. But I can guarantee an amazing amount of blur and kind of a swirly bokeh behind the subject. And it reminds me of the Helios 44 lenses that I have in my collection. The photos have a dreamy feel with a lot of contrast and blur to play. Yes, I edit all my photos before posting, so we'll not get any of the unedited pictures in this review. It's my thing and I like it like that. 
being even a couple of meters from my son, there's still plenty of blur behind it and also in front of it, having just that thin line between the focus parts and autofocus parts. Stopping down to an f1.2 or f1.4 will make you an easy day and getting less blur shots. Even in short close distance like this, my son is just one meter or less from the wall and still you get plenty of blur at f0.95. In video mode I went for a small and portable test scenario where I was trying to catch my son while he throws the rocks into the sea. Shooting at 0.95 on a moving object is quite a challenge, but I was able to get some shots right. For moving scenes, stopping down to f1.4 you will get still plenty of blur but get actual better results. I have tested also how it looks when stopped down from f0.95 to f16, so you can get the idea of the blur transition. Pretty impressive. Shooting in low light condition with this lens will help you lower the ISO a lot and basically getting a noise free image still well exposed. But the downside of this lens is no matter how well experienced photographer you are, the best way for completely wide aperture shooting is to have the object static and the focus picking turn on, possibly on a bigger screen so you can nail the perfect focus. At the maximum aperture of f0.95, there will be some chromatic aberration. You have to get used also that at f0.95, the lens isn't sharp because you will have so much of a thin line where the sharpness is that possibly even one eye is in focus and the other slightly off if the face isn't pointing straight at you. I would recommend to stop it down to f1.2 or f1.8 for better sharp results and fringing control. And if you want to understand the difference between a standard f1.8 35mm that I'm filming right now, I will be switching now from the 35mm Sony lens that I'm filming all the time to the Argus 35mm shooting at f0.95 so you can understand the blur difference. And now we are filming the Argus 35mm f0.95 and you can understand the difference and how much more blur I get in the background and also I have to actually make smaller movements to get my eyes in focus all the time because this is a manual lens and even slighter movements back and forward we let my eyes or my face completely out of focus. This is look that you get when filming with the 0.95 aperture just like in my studio. Ok so for who is this lens designed for? Well I would say that being a full manual lens this is not recommended for any run and gun shooters that want face or eye AF as immediate results. This is for the sophisticated eye and full manual lens that search for something special. Not light, but amazingly wide aperture. Not sharp at f0.95, but amazingly dreamy. Adding a focus ring, this could be a perfect cine lens even if it's not housed in a cinema line style. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, I will be happy to answer to all of them. And also you can check my other lens reviews that I made in the past they will be also in the description. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe with the bell ring icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one.